Good afternoon YouTube, welcome back to my channel. Today's video is going to be all about working with some cobra lilies here. It's going to be my Halloween episode because these things are, um, I just took them out of the pond, out of the little area where they sit, and they are full of all kinds of creepy crawlies. They're starting to fade for the the fall and I'm seeing all kinds of spiders and spider webs and insects crawling out of these things. I am um, not so used to um, things out in the wild like these in the, the natural sort of ecosystem. I'm used to the closed greenhouse here where I don't get any creepy crawlies like this on them. So in this video, I'm, I think I'm going to do two videos because I need to repot one of these. But in this video, I'm going to prepare this guy for winter time. So hopefully you can see it all there. It, it's my biggest one. Um, good size to it. I'll show you this before we begin. Hopefully you can see it here. We have some flower spikes right here. And I noticed one has already been eaten by something creepy crawly in this plant. Um, I know it had some caterpillar type insects in it earlier um, this summer. I didn't really worry about eradicating them because I thought they would just sort of fly away anyways as butterflies or whatever. So these pictures, some of them got eaten really bad this year. Um, the biggest pictures on these ones are always the ones to go. The big ones like this are the ones that fill with insects in here and they always um, rot first. So we're going to get rid of them. Copra lilies don't grow as fast as some Saracenias. You don't want to just give them a haircut. You do only want to trim the pictures that have damage on them or you're going to end up with a very small plant. So depending on how we do this today, I may end up with a big plant or a little plant. But I'm going to start with cutting this guy off because he's like in your face. And there's the cut there. Because this is a Halloween episode, let me just show you what's in this thing here. We'll open up the guts of this plant. And I'll show you why it's rotten. And they literally feed themselves to death. Alright, so let's decapitate it. And there's the actual head of the cobra lily there. And you can see the opening how the insects get in. They go down the tubes. The tubes are full of downward pointing hairs. And here is what we caught this summer in them. It looks like lots of wasps in this one. Let me see if I can focus that a little bit better for you. I'm not gonna be cutting these all open, but I'll um, show you one. So you can see all the little wasps and stuff like that. Anyways, they give themselves so much nutrients that they actually rot themselves out. So the biggest pitchers are always the first to go. They always catch the most insects, which is kind of sad because you're always left with little ones after that. But there's another one. And what we're going to do is just trim off anything that looks really ugly to start with and then see where we're at after that. So I'm going for the ones that just aren't going to make it for the fall. And these guys, they need to go dormant. They um, are starting that process now um, that the light is being reduced and the temperatures are going down. So I'm going to actually give it quite a good haircut this year. I want to get to the sort of the center of this thing and give it a good clean out. Um, what else can I tell you? So I'm going to store these in my temperate greenhouse. Um, it'll be a little bit more frost protected. We don't have hard freezes here, but in the past years, if it ever got down below about minus five, I would pull them into a, a garage or the greenhouse until the cold snap passed. They do like to be around zero, but not necessarily below zero. And they form such dense mats of cobra lily heads that um, is really hard to get in here. You can't get even close to the core of it. Because of that, because they're so dense, they're perfect houses for insects. So that's one of the reasons we want to do this is just um, clean it up, get rid of some of these old pictures. Maybe the insects will um, fly away or take off once they're more exposed to light. Um, I want to see exactly what kind of insects I'm dealing with here. And I want to make sure that it's all cleaned up before I put it in with my other plants, like my orchids and my other carnivorous plants that have been in the greenhouse, the temperate greenhouse, all year. These guys, they don't like the hot, hot summers, so I don't stick them in that greenhouse for the summer or they would actually cook. This plant is so big, it really needs a good dividing, but um, isn't going to get that this time. Not, um, 
Not today anyways. But um, there, it looks a little better. There's another one that should come off. And we're just sort of exposing the, um, the innards of the plant there. All kinds of dead bugs and stuff are coming out of there. Look at that. So, fly. Another thing to note is they do um, set their spikes this time of year. And that's why this thing seems to be in spike. These spikes are a little bigger than I like to see. So if it really got cold out, I would lose some spikes here. And that's next year's flowers, next year's seeds. So we want to make sure um, it's protected for the fall. Now, it's hard because we don't want to confuse a bronze or sort of a red top from the sun with something that's actually gone dead. But we want to make sure it looks nice and sharp for next spring as well. So I don't know. That looks pretty good. There's one more over there that's kind of taking a beating and isn't all that isn't all that happy looking there's another one in there I'm just gonna kind of keep going at this and free up the room um, the other thing I'm gonna do is let them um, they, they've been sort of out in the elements so I'm gonna let them dry out a little bit before I treat them and then I want to go through and treat them and make sure there's no insects on them or any pests like that so so far so good I haven't seen much of anything on them um, as I say, in some of the other plants, I did see some spiders running around there, but nothing like that so far in these, and I'm just going to clean them up. I'll give the pots a, a wipe off. I'm going to sit them in the tray. The tray's right back here, that black tray. That's what they've been in all summer. You can see the, um, the green mark is the water line. Um, I'm still going to keep them in that tray, but it's only going to be slightly damp. I don't want to keep them wet for the winter. I want to give them nice, good airflow and keep them... Um, yeah, from being too, too soggy. So it's almost going to not dry out, but but not be soaping or socking, soggy wet. Blah. But anyway, so that guy looks a little bit better now. Um, I might take him over to the sink and give him a blast. Try to clean out some of the tubes here. You can see new cobra lilies coming up from inside. There's a creepy old spider right there. There we go. I told you there was creepies around here. Creepy crawlies. And yeah, there's lots of cobra lilies pushing up from the side. This thing really needs to be divided, but as I say, it's just not going to happen this year. So these are, um, I like white pots, and this is a bleach container, the bottom of a bleach container. They work really well for me. In the next video, I'm going to be putting one of the smaller plants into a bleach container just like that and getting it ready for um, fall. So I think we're going to leave it at that. That is what I'm going to do to all the rest of the cobra lilies as well make them a little bit more manageable, and we'll go from there. So if you like this video and you want to see more videos like this, make sure you subscribe to my channel. Uh, make sure you check out the next video because I'm going to repot one of these guys after it's all cleaned up. All right, thanks for watching. There's one final look at the carnage for you guys. The plants look quite a bit better, actually. Um, quite a bit smaller, but quite a bit better. I noticed as soon as I started filming that there was like one little one. I got pickier as time went on. And I was like, well, you had a mark on it. You had a mark on it. So I'm going to remove that guy too because he's got some marks on it. And by the time they um, go through the fall and the winter, they just they need a fresh start. So there we go. Not total destruction of my carnivorous plants. Just some destruction of my carnivorous cobra lilies there. They are ready for fall. So again, I'm just going to... Keep them on the drier side, keep them out of the rain. I always, um, in the past, would put them under my eaves. I never want them to be out in the open in the rain and that, that we get here on the west coast. This year they're gonna go in the little temperate greenhouse so that'll um, minimize temperature swings, protect them from wind chill, and hopefully all those buds I'm gonna be able to protect and they're gonna be okay for the springtime for when they start blooming, get lots of seeds. Anyways, Again, hope you like this video and stay tuned for repotting one of these guys coming up now.